And you guys seriously thought we're not gonna show Mimigool again <laughs> after the round two featured match. Too bad, Pearly Mimigool is in day two of YCS Bologna in round 10 with a chance of achieving the top cut. And I have no idea how it pairs up. Pearly Mimigool, it, it, it doesn't make sense to me, but we're going to see how Kashtira Snake Eyes is going to play their first turn. First. Yep, so Unicorn, oh that's a really, really good starter for this deck. Yep. Unicorn first to make sure that Ash Blossom and Joy Spring, Valor and so on could get punished by the Kashtira Unicorn. And uh, speaking about the combination of Pearly and Mimigul, like the one thing that I could see overlapping between the two is that the Pearly main deck monsters, they are level one. So yeah. if your first one gets Valored and then the second one gets Imprimed, you can still overlay them <laughs> to go into the giant Mimigul, right? Isn't that the game plan possibly? <laughs> Absolutely insane. <laughs> this That's what I'm saying. Sounds very interesting. Yeah. To be honest. I mean, I, I'm very excited. I hope we can see some of that because it might be a very unique end field. Because some people might be thinking, hey, this is maybe just a pearly deck with a small Mimigol engine or oh. the other way around. But no, you actually just have the full package of both decks here on the list. So I'm incredibly excited. But for now, Wael is incredibly excited about starting his turn here, and his opener is great. I'm, I'm gonna say there is a theme to this. Every time you feature really, really cool decks that are super unique and uh, very off meta, they lose the dice roll against combo heavy decks. It, it, I, I don't think it has ever happened that one of those Mimigool pearly decks got to start in a featured match. Yeah, it, it's almost like a curse, right? They, yeah. they just don't get to start the game, but uh, instead, well, it is. But uh, naturally, though, at least the pearly part of the deck is designed to do pretty well going second into fields, as of course the good old Divine Arsenal AA Zeus is in there, for example, which is always great, especially, for example, against Fire King Snake Alex. This is not the Fire King variant, but uh, let's see how much we can do with our Exceed Monsters going second here in this matchup. Quite curious to see that. We have the Fiendsmith engine in there as well. Fiendsmith, ever since the introduction of the deck, has been or of the theme has been absolutely dominant. The ability to make a good combo out of just any two monsters is absolutely insane. Reminds me of Orcus back in the days. You needed two monsters with different names. That's not even the case anymore. What do you mean, back in the day? We have Orcus in day two of this YCS Fair as enough. well. <laughs> because we had him on feature in round number eight, Francesco Simoncelli, and I saw he won his last round as well of the day, so he's actually X1-1 as far as oh. I'm aware. Okay, if you don't combo like back in the day, then please tell me how you go for a full Orcus combo with any two monsters. Uh, yeah, you might be saying, I mean, that's Where probably, your nightmare mermaid, that's probably full Fiendsmith combo, huh? Oh, true. <laughs> But yeah, we are right now, of course, rather seeing Fiendsmith cards on the side of Wael, as there is the Desiree on the field. So it's not just Kashtira Snake Eyes, but Kashtira Fiendsmith Snake Eyes. And I think I even saw some Azamina cards in there. So he's like using all of the engines available that you could pair with Snake Eyes, essentially. Where are hand traps? Yeah, I mean, uh, let me check the list. Don't want to spoil it too much yet. He doesn't need them at the moment, but there is still plenty of that too, to be honest. But can we go a little bit through what the deck tries to achieve in its uh, end field for our newer viewers, perhaps, who haven't seen too much Snake Eyes yeah. so far? Yeah, for sure. I love that because uh, it is actually like with the combination of all those things, it's a pretty unique and strong end field, if you ask me, because uh, even though uh, it's not naturally a fusion deck, the Snake Eye deck, nowadays the end field that you're creating is going to consist of Fiendsmith Desiree, first of all, which we already see on the field, which is a very, very strong negate on all kind of face-up cards on the opponent's side of the field, even on your side of the field, but usually on your opponent's turn, you want to negate the others. And then also on top of that, you're going to have Azamina Ilya Silvia, which is an additional negate. So modern decks nowadays kind of struggle sometimes to put up those negates, but this deck actually is putting up multiple of them. And then on top of that, of course, the Snake Eye portion of the deck, we all know about that. There is going to be usually a Link 4, a Fire Link 4 monster together with the Promethean Princes in the graveyard. Promethean Princes right now on the field. So we might see one of your Salomon Great monsters in this one, Leo, as there is Raging Phoenix in this extra deck. I love Salomon Great. Yep. Have I ever mentioned that? No, maybe once or twice. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe once or twice. And of course, we have already established the IP Mascarena and the Spam Traps on as well. So as far as I'm aware, this might be as good as it gets. We're not seeing any Azamina cards so far, but besides that, we are really, really doing well here. I mean, this board looks amazing. And of course, Berth is a very good card against Pirelli. Yep. Oh, you're right. I didn't even think about that. That's amazing. So 
Usually you're, you're very often linking off the Kashtira monsters, but here it might definitely be worth keeping the Kashtira monster around. Speaking of Salaman Great. Oh, true. Leo, you're getting a treat here for the first <laughs> round of the day. I'm so hyped. I'm, I'm so incredibly hyped right now. Yesterday we even saw a full Salaman Great deck that couldn't unfold its, its true power of the combo playing with the uh, Terror Top and playing a full combo with only Terror Top actually just led up to a field of Salomon Great Sunlight Wolf and a Salomon Great Roar. Oh, we're just ending on the Sunlight Wolf here, apparently, oh, wow. because turn goes over to Filippo. I mean, why not? Yeah, I don't dislike it either. So that's a strong field. We have the Flamberge ready to bring out the IP Mascarena. The field spell can do the same. So that is multiple layers of direction. This uh, is, yeah, for sure. This is way better than bringing out an Emblem Whale. You save, or bringing out the Raging Phoenix, you save the resources in your extra deck. You have the ability to, when you summon out your IP Mascarena or basically anything that you want, you can trigger the Sunlight Wolf to gain extra resources, which is harder to manage in the Snake Eyes deck now, when days after the last Forbidden Limited list update because you only have one Snake Eye Ash. Oh, and now the surprise factor kicks in. He is going to reveal that there is a Mimigo card in his hand. Oh. And maybe Filippo might be playing uh, a funny game with his opponent, revealing the Mimigo cards, but then uh, just disregarding, not saying that there's pearly cards in there. But this could be good, right? Do we no. just block the zone? No, I think you can just chain Flamberge and summon the IP Mascarena and oh. the Archfiend country is off. You might be right. But the mind game on this one is very good. As Basti said, he can reveal Mimigul and just go to game two, and his opponent doesn't have an out to Noir, which yeah. is very good. Yeah, I agree. That could definitely happen. I mean, maybe he's confident, though. Maybe Filippo says, hey, we're just going to play through this. I have my pearly Mimigul deck, so of course. I'm going to say, if you want to scoop, you will have to do that now, because even if, well, summons out the IP Mascarena, he's going to activate Kashtira Unicorn oh. after that. Try to look into the extra deck, True. and then you will have to scoop. Very, very, very good Unless point. you think you can break this field, and I don't know the deck list, but it, it, it looks a little bit tough. I mean... It is Filippo. He's 7 2 at this YCS. He surely knows what he's doing. But the dragon doesn't know what to do anymore as it stays in the hand. You were anticipating right there, Leo. IP Mascarena jumping into the place the dragon wanted to go. Oh, he's giving his extra deck over. Okay, so. I, I like how we are all super surprised that he doesn't give up the game. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, look. Well, look through this. Look at that extra deck. You're getting a couple of surprises with this one. <laughs> I would be very confused. <laughs> yes, same, same, same. I would, I would shuffle this extra deck and then just uh, give it over. Or maybe banish a Zeus. Oh, like look. good old Kashtira plays. Yeah. Oh, look, there's a Starlight Rare. Let, let me read the Starlight Rare there. <laughs> let me read all of those cards. Please. Giant Mimigul is the one that uh, brought his attention there. The only problem that I can see is, uh, is that Flamers cannot summon the two level one monsters in the field. True. But I mean, does it even matter at this time? <laughs> we will have to see. So, Filippo. I mean, a good thing about the dragon staying in hand is that you can now discard it for the pearly quick spells, I guess. So maybe that was the plan all along. Genius plan. Yeah, I, I know, I know. We worked on it together. <laughs> <laughs> You've been uh, theory crafting. Oh, novel summoned for Lily, and now Whale is is. I think now is the point where he's completely confused because he was like, maybe there's an access point to the pearly cards in the extra deck through the Mimigo cards, but no, there's actually pearly cards in his main deck as well. Oh my! So are we just going to let our opponent play because it is actually quite hard to interrupt Ooh. the pearly deck? Going for an infinite impermanence, that's a really really good one on the pearl lily because pearl lily does not only give you an immediate plus one on the summon, it also has a crazy effect to exceed summon with a spell from the graveyard. Uh, sorry, zodiac power crypt. <laughs> <laughs> and next up we have the first pearly quick spell. It is going to be a very very. Pretty, pretty memory. memory. Let's see how pretty of a memory this is going to be turning out into. So, I mean, we haven't had Pearly on feature for, uh, for a while. So I missed it. Yeah. Mike, what, what is the general concept with all those quick spells and everything? What are they trying to do with these? So they want to summon Pearly from the main deck, the main deck monsters, by discarding a card. The only problem at this point is that, of course, Desiree is still on the field and as I said before, Berth is also on the field. So things are not looking very good for Filippo at this point. However, Zeus is still in the extra deck, which is very yeah. important. Yeah, it absolutely is. So yeah, basically, there is those um, four different quick spells. We have Delicious Memories, Happy Memories, Pretty Memories, and Sleepy Memories. All of them, as you said, basically have 
The same effect, saying you can discard a card from your hand to then special summon out a Pearly or a Pearlily from your deck. Oh, okay, we get to reveal. Can we add that Pearly Yeep to our hand there? I think it's... I think it's only... Oh! Yeah, you're allowed to add the Yeep to your hand, at least that. And then so with the quick spells, you're trying to get to your Pearly Cats from the deck. And then, then of course, uh, you're explained Pearl Lily, Leo, uh, with having the ability to exceed someone from the graveyard, basically. But now we have the little brother, just the regular Pearly on the field as well, having the ability to exceed someone from the hand, essentially, yeah. as well. So Actually, I want to say it's the big brother. Okay, I mean... Because Pearly was there first. Purr. I didn't know you were so into their family relationships, but uh, if you have those insider uh, information, I, I will accept it. I have spent more than enough time with Pearlies. I me, know, I know. <laughs> Information-wise, it was very important that Shifter was revealed, since now we oh, yeah. knows that Filippo is on Shifter. Oh, yeah. That's even like that's already usually very important, but here it's incredibly important as uh, Wael actually is siding one copy of Shifter for cross out designators. So having that extra bit of information is massive here in this situation. You're right, and it's very important that they speak is a very good interruption against Pirelli for both effects, since Pirelli's yeah, sure. activate to exit Sagamon and need themselves on the field. Yeah, that's true. Okay. I think that's a heads-up play there by Whale, immediately going after the Pearly. Because that means now Filippo will have to invest more cards to even get to more monsters. Oh, oh that might be the impermanence column, is it? I'm not sure. Oh. I'm not 100% sure. it was under the extra monster zone. I feel like too, why would it yeah. be? But I think you're right. Because usually you always try to go into the middle zone. Oh, oh yeah, yeah they're look, they're confirming. I think Filippo knows what he's doing. It's interesting, though, because he activated the pretty memory into the column of the Fiends with Sequence, and now he's just taking the gamble, just going down the middle. It's quite, I mean, quite it's, bold it's, of it's them. It's not a gamble if you are confident. True, true, I agree. But uh, certainly the Mimigul Maker that he has just activated there is possibly the best Mimigul card in the deck, so maybe this one pushes us over the edge here. So the thing is, if you set... Wait a second. If you set Mimigul Dragon to your opponent's side of the field mm -hmm. and you're attacking into it, it flips and activates in damage step so Desiree can't negate it. Mm -hmm. What is happening? Mm -hmm. What is what is happening, everyone? Stay calm. Stay calm. Stay calm. This is a very good play, actually. Yeah. I think Wait, this might be the one. Oh, 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 Maker goes to the grave and unresolved. Oh, no, I think we double-checked which column that was, and no it seems way. like it was the wrong column that we just had there. I'm I shambles. think that was the impermanence column in the end. Filippo, no. Don't uh, do this to us. Oh, no, man. Is that just going to be Anima now after? It is the relinquished Anima. Oh, that is, that is so sad. That could have been the play of the century. I mean, would have given well, still a lot of follow-up. Summoning back a Snake Eye Ash has added Poplar to the hand previously. Can summon a then back Ash and the Oak from hand, or from the graveyard rather. Gets to send as well with the Desiree. But I think uh, that Wolf goes to the graveyard actually. Because SP was chained to Anima. Yes. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Ruling expert here, Mike. Uh, why is that? So it, it tries to equip it, but there's nothing to equip with it anymore? Exactly. Oh, but is there's the also nothing to be played anymore here in this game, as YL picks up his cards being the winner of this first game here. So it is still Snake Eye, Azamina, Fiendsmith, Kashtira being up top. And that game in the end was uh, Mimigul Maker Me Sad because mm. I wish it wasn't played in the Impermanence Column. I would have loved to see an attack yeah. and damage step effect of the Mimigul Dragon to wipe the entire field of well. I think that still if you lose your battle phase like this and you don't have too many resources in hand and your opponent gets to summon back Oak and Ash, it is an uphill climb for you. True. However, then we would have also gotten the chance to see how the Snake Eye deck recycles nowadays. Yeah, no, I absolutely agree. You're right. One thing that is interesting, does Promethean Princess possibly work on face-down monsters? Because he may have had the chance to go Promethean Princess on the dragon. That's actually something that never comes up, right? But like, we, we would have to double-check, because there was still the Fiendsmith, uh, the Promethean Princess in the graveyard. And Leo is the, making the little why, read why there. Why am I doing this? <laughs> I don't know. That's you doing that. Because he definitely had that princess still left, so even if we like even one fire monster you control and one monster your opponent controls, but we forgot about the fire part. True, yeah, yeah. that's <laughs> a very good point. You're right, you're right. But no, um, I am interested in what we're going to set up going first here because there is still, as I said, the usual Mimigul stuff in here. So it is the field spell, it is the uh, Mimigul room. So it feels like the usual stuff with that. But then on top of that, we also have like Noir in the extra deck. So yeah. probably going for Noir isn't that bad either. So a very 
tough uh, hand trap to play for, with Pirelli's impermanence. Is there any chance that you play Mimigul so you can have a motion on your opponent's side of the field and you protect your Pirelli's from impermanence? Yeah, I mean, it does work like that. I don't know whether that's the main idea, but that's certainly something that will help them, for sure. I agree, that's good. Uh, and also, on top of that, um, we got to see how well they even know about all those informations. <laughs> how well? <laughs> how well, you're right, you're right, you're right. Uh, because his side deck, for example, Nibiru, a card you would usually completely avoid to bring in against uh, the pearly part of the deck. But now that there is the Mimigo card as well, you might be thinking, hmm, this. apparently he keeps yeah. on going, apparently he keeps on summoning, so maybe Nibiru becomes worth all of a sudden. Is it though? The, the cool thing about the Mimigools is that you set a monster to your <laughs> opponent's side of the field, so if you Nibiru, you won't be able to tribute it away. However, I think during the combo, you're most of the time flipping the monster immediately, giving over the Archfiend to give you an additional draw, yeah. get it back to your side of the field, then go into the Giant. I think there there is quite a few special summons. I think I wouldn't cite a Nibiru, as you said, Probably not, versus yeah. any of the decks, but both of those combined, if you go into two engines, you can't go for full two engines without playing into Nibiru, it's just simply impossible. Yeah, that's what yeah. I'm thinking. Like, usually when you have a combination of decks, all of a sudden it's vulnerable to Nibiru in whatever possible way. Yeah. As long as you're not combining Eldritch and Labyrinth, I guess. <laughs> I mean, the main idea, as you said before, it is to have Pirelli's maybe get Veilard, and yeah. then go to uh, the Xyz of Mimigul, and go to Mimigul Master and play like that. Yeah, I mean, I hope we get to see that, honestly. Yeah. I hope that is going to be what we get to witness here. And then also, of course, while we'll be sitting there, yeah, do, do I ghost Orga this? Do I not? Or what's the plan right now? I don't really know. But uh, I'm sure that Filippo down. knows, yeah. <laughs> Filippo certainly knows, and I think the players are ready. The players have shuffled up. So we are as well. Game number two of this first feature event of the day is starting and coming your way now. And then we go for the good old draw five. That's how every match of Yu-Gi-Oh! starts, how every game of Yu-Gi-Oh! starts, and Filippo will be going first. By the way, a little clarification, it was not the Imperm column in the last match, it was Desiree that negated oh, the Mimigul Maker. Oh, yes! That how does that that forget make sense. about Desiree? <laughs> that does make I'm, a whole lot of sense. I'm so, sorry, everyone. Filippo, we confused everyone. That is going to be the activation of our dungeon. That's a good start. A very good card, I guess, Snake Eyes, since you cannot normal summon. Yeah, but there is plenty of ways to play without your normal summon in there, with like a bonfire or a one-for-one, -one, as we have seen yesterday, original Sinful Spoils. But it certainly does help. You know which one is the, the worst one to witness? Diabelsta which sending the set monster because Diabelsta which hasn't yeah. does not have to send face-up cards. So that one hurts yeah. if they have access to the witch. But uh, as long as they don't have that, the card still does a does a whole I, lot. I yeah. don't think you're ending your turn on a set monster on the opposing side of the field. I think you have a room to set a card, and then if you have the oh. master on the field, you're trying to flip it up immediately. Yeah, you're right. There, po there certainly is a set monster right now on the field of Jaboel because he just gave it over to him. It's Mimigul Slime. It is the slime. Oh, wow. Okay. What, does, what does that do? Slime is Stick one of the to newer the field. cards. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Sticking to its face can... down defense position. We get to search the Arc Fiend here. And uh, yeah, the Slime definitely can set itself as the usual thing. And then also, um, you can just, um, doing a Mayfair special summon from your hand as well as some of the new uh, Mimigul things do. Oh, oh, Slime activating. We get to witness it here live on camera. Slime's changing itself to defense position. Ooh, that's not... I think that's not one of the ones you want to give over to your opponent, to be honest. We had to do it here to get our play started, but Slime is one that you want to use as an extender for your own combo. Oh, Slime's coming back. I mean, it, it activates and lets your opponent special summon a monster from the deck, a gimmick called monster, so that is... Quite, That's quite, quite good, honestly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was completely on the, on, on the wrong road there. We have a Slime back to us. These cards get confusing sometimes, it's fine. Yeah, I mean, they're changing the side of the field. How would yeah. that not be confusing? We searched the Mimigo Maker there, so... The Mimigo portion of the deck is definitely off to a good start here. Well, it uh, looks good. I, I want to see where this takes us because we haven't seen an uninterrupted Mimigo combo so far ever. Yeah. Oh, that, that's a messy Exceed summon. Come on. It's Organize giant, your Exceed giant. materials. Oh, yeah. That, that is actually... Uh, oh, uh, no. Okay. It this, is. this throne, huh? Yeah, it's Mimigo throne indeed. 
So what does Throne do? I'm gonna get it up for you guys and I'm going to read the card out as Vile also needs to read it. You can detach one material from this card, special summon one Mimigul monster from your hand, deck, or GY. During the main phase, quick effect. You can target one Mimigul master you control. Equip this card to it as an equip spell and give it 1000 attack. Then you can return cards from the field to the hand up to the number of materials this card had. You can only use one Mimigul throne effect per turn, only one step per turn. So I think that we're trying to set up a Mimigul master here. Otherwise, this would not make too much sense, right? I mean, yeah, we just try to use it to special summon from the deck. Oh, yeah, I'm yeah, pretty do, sure it just does do that. And so. we should also note that Filippo now can activate Thrust or Talent if he has it. Oh, you're right. right. Shoot. The Gen and Ken technology, but just with the Mimigo cards. You're right, you're right. Let me see. Is there any of that in his deck? Because those definitely would make sense, I agree. Those would be great. Uh, there's Talents in there, yeah. Absolutely. I, I think Talents makes more sense because Thrust is a little bit worse when you're going first because when they activate, they move over to your side of the field and then you don't get the good part of the Thrust effect. I mean, arguably the good part, because we have talked about that yesterday as well. Frost at the moment is being used to yeah. set powerful trap cards all over the format, and I'm seeing Dimensional Barrier in there. The after Siding is crazy. I'm seeing even Hoppy's Featherstorm in there, my dear friend. Oh, so I gracious. think Frost here might actually be a very good uh, possibility. After Siding, definitely, you're uh, right. Oh, that. and look at that beautiful Master there now on the field as well. Filippo is smiling. He gets to show off what he has designed there himself. Probably weeks of testing leading to this tournament, and so far it's going pretty well for him. Is it only me that is very excited to see Mimigul go off? Yeah, t t totally. Because yesterday we didn't really get to witness that, but now the revenge arc of Mimigul has started. <laughs> and it has teamed up with Pearly to finally fulfill maybe the first YCS top that it's ever going to have. And there is my friend <sighs> Pearly finally. now as well. That's the transition now into the Cats. My friend. Come My join me. Friends. Join me on the kitty side of things. I'm going to search for one of the pearly cards now. What a flexible card. Once per turn. It's not even a field spell. It, it plays like a field spell, I'm gonna say. Yeah. But it's good that it doesn't have to uh, that he doesn't have to give yeah. up the field spell there that he already has. So that is a sleepy memory that we see there being revealed. And probably a pretty memory. Oh, okay. Oh, third oh, option. Oh, oh. And was there something sided Delicious. out? Delicious. I see delicious, I see sleepy. Oh yeah, now so we have found delicious. free. We have found free. Delicioso. And where we're going. We're rolling the die because it is going to be decided randomly which one he gets. He has a clear preference as he was only revealing one delicious and two sleepy, so he would prefer getting the sleepy memories here. Let's see whether he got the 30 oh, the 66% chance there. And oh I think he has delicious in hand actually. I think we did get the 33% instead. Delicious memories, there it is. There are a few more spell cards, and it actually has so many cards in hand. It's crazy, isn't it? Look, we searched the Mimigul Fairy and we didn't even need it, we just discarded it instead. But does Fairy do something in the graveyard? Because otherwise it feels a little bit uh, like this was a wasted search. I mean, sometimes you search cards just to discard them, that's also fine. Especially if you play a deck with a heavy discard engine. Yeah. Look at that, Per Lily now on the field. It's crazy to see that he hasn't even gone through that one yet, but we're searching my friend Pearly, and again, that might be a case of we just want to discard it, yeah. because we already have that. And that is clearly once per turn, of course. Once per turn, if you want to say. I, I do want to say that. <laughs> so we're using the on-field effect, the second one of Pearl Lily now, and we're going to make that exceed summon from the graveyard, as you were saying earlier on, and there is, as the Italians like to call it, Plampito. Really? <laughs> e Pearly Plampito. I love this. It is a very funny name for it. And of course, in English, it's just E Pearly Plump. And E Pearly Plump, whenever a spell, a Pearly spell is activated, that's not a Pearly spell, that's Mimigul. How do we all of that without even activating Mimigul Maker? That's completely mad. Did, did you know that in Italian, and I, this is a half knowledge that I have because a friend told me, Ito <laughs> is uh, used for like cute things in the south, and uh, here, uh, rather in the north, it's Ino most of the time. Okay. So it's Plampino da Plampito. Uh, feel free to correct me, everyone. Is there any chance that Well has any Biru in his hand? Because he can definitely hurt at this yeah. moment. Oh yeah, that would be crazy. Okay. But, I mean, it, Nibiru sees a lot less play nowadays, right? Due to Impulse, yes. Basi, can you tell us, is uh, there a chance of a Nibiru? 
there is a chance of Nibiru on Filippo's side, but also on Wells' side. Actually, even though not being incredibly popular overall, uh, both of these players are relying on it. And I think uh, that is correlating to the fact that both of these decks are not really capable of playing Impulse. Yeah. As soon as you don't have the option to go for the um, Dominus Impulse, Nibiru becomes a lot more appealing because you don't have to fear that restriction of impulse applying to your turn, so or to your whole duel after you activate it, and therefore having the option to go for Nibiru is good when you're already playing with dark monsters yourself. What do you think is going through Wales' mind right now? There's a rabbit. <laughs> after all those cats, there's now a rabbit on the field. That's probably going through his so mind. It's half a zoo. The zero red rabbit has just been activated and he has just set the Angel Statue as a rune and we're not even done yet. Filippo, what are you trying to cook here? This is a full meal. This is basically everything. Dungeon gets now chained to that. No, no, we're, we're using the Happy ah, Memories yeah, turn to protect Dungeon the, from goodness. destruction for the rest of the turn. And I think our Plump is going to have enough materials after using its effect to go up into an Axe Pearly Noir. But in the meantime, there's another Pearly coming to the field. We're really going all in here, I feel like. We're bringing out all the Pearly monsters, our Mimigo package completely out there. But we're revealing more Pearly spells, even follow up for next turn, revealing a Solemn Judgment. If we had that as well, if we could have added that one off of the Pearly there, that would have been crazy. Oh look, Plump getting two extra materials. It already had three materials, so it has five materials in total, meaning we can just make place for one of the most important, most impressive boss monsters in all of Yu-Gi-Oh! Axe, Pearl, you know, are a bunch of materials underneath. And look at that, he's counting himself, but that should equal six materials under that Noir, meaning it's unaffected. That is huge. And of course, you can spin three cards of your opponent when you feel like the unaffected part is not really necessary anymore. When you get the feeling that your opponent is going to break your field, take apart your resources, then you can go, hey, I can, I can still spin three cards of yours, so uh, let me just do that real quick so you can't set up anything. I don't care about the unaffected part. While is now asking something uh, about the Mimigul dungeon, and I, I, I'm very happy that we saw the full combo because this is a really impressive field. I yeah, think this is it's, great. It's going to be almost impossible to break that field. Let's see if Wael finds a way to break it. However, what nowadays is uh, not very much uh, a trend now is that this is a combo that is incredibly vulnerable to Nibiru, the Primal B. I mean, even and if they do Nibiru, you still have the My Friend Pearly activating, right? So you at least get three of the quick spells back. But on the other hand, you already went through the, the on-field effect of um, Pearl Lily, and you went through both of your Pearlies. So how much are you even going yeah. to do of those? So I think, yeah, Nibiru would hurt you. At this point, though, there is no one on the field, so... I yeah, but I mean, you could have done before that way the way before, yeah. right? Yeah, I think so too. And uh, interestingly enough, we kept the Mimigul thrown around, and you were reading out the effect earlier. There is an interruption with that on the yeah. opponent's turn as well. So this is definitely multiple layers of interruption, and turn goes over to well. And with all those, for him, new cards that he may be seeing for the first time here, he's getting to face a really tough task to play through here. Let's see if he even tries to go through this. I like thrown because it is, is it a main phase quick effect? I think it is a main phase quick effect, yeah. Yeah, that's is. unfortunate. I would have loved to see it activate a damage step to equip itself to the Mimigul Master, and that would have been very, very cool. That's true. Okay. Azurun was once more revealed. That's an additional piece of interaction, of course. Paired up with the Sealer Rabbit even more so because... Oh, oh. Okay, Deception of the Sinful Spoils is activated. We immediately are going to chain Azerun. That's not because of the Azerun itself, but because of the effect of the Silhouette Rabbit destroying the Deception right away. That's massive. Silhouette Rabbit is an amazing card. It really, really, really is. It provides two interruptions. It, it kind of reminds me of... Um, oh, but there's Wanted as well. I told you earlier, having the Snake Idea Belt Star, or no, the, the Black Witch, to send that monster to the graveyard is definitely helping your place. Yeah, it's helping, but is it enough? That is the big question. I think that Angel Statue can negate the Summon of the Bells, right? It can, yeah. It definitely can. So that's, yeah, true. That's good for sure. Uh, but yeah, like the, the Silver Rabbit kind of reminds me of uh, good old Anaconda. <laughs> Verde Anaconda. How? It's just two monsters going into, like, last thing you do is a link two monster, bring it out, make another card with it. In this case, be Azarun, in the other case, a huge monster. Somewhat similar? 
Okay, I'll, I'll give you that. <laughs> I'm not, I'm Very not powerful Link 2 monsters. I'm, I'm not happy with it. I'll give it to you. Yeah, you see it though, right? You see it. Okay, we are going to give up the dragon. And look at that. Yeah. Mike, you're all right. Immediately negating the summon. I mean, your opponent can't normal summon monsters, so uh, you negate that Diabalstar every single day of the week. Oh, right? field empty, though. Unicorn is there to immediately come out. Mimigo room, though, right away. That was the last unknown card set there. And Mimigo room has an also an amazing effect, which not only let you special summon, but if I recall correctly, can set the monster face down. Exactly. Yep. One, two. Well, reading that one again. Unicorn setting, but no more cards to be answered. And this, Filippo with Pearly Mimigo takes out game number two, and the crowd is cheering. Never seen anything like that in my life. <laughs> nope, absolutely not. But uh, I also appreciate Vile for letting his opponent cop yeah. off and show, showing everything that Same. he got. Of course, you also want to know what your opponent is playing in your deck. So even when you have a good gut feeling that you're going to lose this one, it doesn't really hurt if you're not very close to time to just watch your opponent combo and maybe try to figure out on the fly what are the choke points where can i interrupt my opponent in the next game i will get to start that one where will i try to win the game yeah i mean information is one of the biggest aspects of the game so i think that now that he knows what his opponent is going to do it's very yeah. important and also can i say that their synergy is amazing I didn't expect Pirelli and Mimical to work so well together. Yeah, it's even more so. Like, we, we talked about the overlay of just level 1 monsters, but we didn't even need that. We already had enough level 1 monsters with the Mimigo cards. So uh, what else is there? As you said, like, playing around impermanence is kind of cool with giving the opponent set monsters. And on top of that... Um, what, what was the synergy? Yeah. <laughs> Why? Well, what I was the synergy? Just had both <laughs> engines. Yeah, but because it, it wasn't uninterrupted. I, if he went for the hand trap in a yeah. Mimigul or a Pirelli, he can just uh, access his other engine. That's yeah. why. That's true. If you, if you start off with the Pirelli engine, for sure, then if you get interrupted, you can segue into that. I like that, yeah. Sure. Uh, I think it's, it's a tough call to play way less hand traps when you're playing two full engines, almost. Or actually, not almost. He's just playing two engines. You can't. You can't halfway play a Pearly <laughs> engine, right? That just doesn't make sense. If you summon out Pearly, then uh, you're not going to hit anything ever. So uh, you, you are committed to going first in this deck. Yeah, I feel like post-siding, so for example here in Game 3 that we're about to have, is there a chance we just side out a lot of our Mimigo cards possibly? Because the no. Mimigo cards... I feel like the Pearly cards are so much stronger at going second compared to the Mimigo cards, right? Going first, they're both crazy, but going second, I feel like the Pearly cards are a little favored in your show. Okay. Well. Yeah, would I'm sorry. How, how would I disrespect your <laughs> Mimigo cards going second, my man? <laughs> you are upsetting me greatly. <laughs> I have to agree with Bastion on this one. Oh, <laughs> finally, man. Finally. <laughs> Yesterday you were all with Leo, and now finally I got to take. <laughs> but you the Cyclone on. brothers are torn apart. It is, it is heartbreaking, no? But I, 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 from a logical standpoint, I might agree with you. Might agree with you guys. But Mike, the Mimigul, agree Mike, Mike agrees, agrees with, Mike agrees the, with the, me. Yeah. The Mimigul engine is so big that it's going to be hard to side out everything. So, and uh, yeah. can, can you play like a very little engine of that? I suppose you can, right? Can you? Can you? Yeah, yeah, you can, I think. I think just playing Mimigul Maker and a couple of targets for it does work. It's uh, it's something that you would have to ask the, Filippo, though. The play with the Dragon is also very relevant going second, that you mentioned. True, yeah. true. Yeah, I'll give you that. And you, if you play just very few Mimigul's, you can discard them for pearly spells, I suppose. So actually, it's not that relevant what you draw, as long as you have those memories. Mm. The only thing that is uh, kind of upsetting about that is because he's already playing a field spell, he disregarded the pearly field spell completely. And I feel like yeah. the pearly field spell is maybe the main reason why pearly is so strong going second, the pearly stray street, just preventing all the targeting for, yeah. him, for example, princes, Aspie Little Knight. So like that just helps so much. Not having access to that card is maybe going to be uh, hindering him a little bit here going second. But all of that, of course, only theoretical mind games. Players are ready as we are. Hopefully you at home are as well. Game number three, starting now. I see someone in the crowd is wearing really, really cool sunglasses. Props to that. Okay. So maybe we will see them on stream later on. Just wanted to shout out there. <laughs>
Didn't know you were into sunglasses that much, but let's see how much that. Wile is into his Kashtira Snake Eye cards here. Did he get the perfect start again? Because that first game start, honestly, on both sides, we had really, really impressive turns, yeah. right? Basically, both of them had their ideal start. And Filippo... Oh, no. For a second effort, maybe he's doing something in draw phase, but doesn't seem like it. Could have been a shifter. Oh, De my wow. deck locked down no. right away. But oh. a set cut oh. only after. Huh? Filippo, maybe we can manage. There's not that much to overcome. Deck lockdown is crazy, but there's no combo field. Cosmic cyclone. Cosmic cyclone. <laughs> cosmic cyclone. Cosmic cyclone. Cosmic cyclone. Calm down, cosmic Leo. Cyclone. There's none. There's none. Wait, what? Yep. He's one of the only people in the entire tournament that is not siding it. But let's see. <gasps> there is a dimension shifter picked up as the sixth card and usually that would be something to gasp about and say oh no that is a very bad top tech however there were no plays from Weil and Filippo hasn't played a single card in his first turn so he can still activate dimension shifter now that is true I, I'm not even 100% sure to. whether he necessarily picked it up because there's also I've seen that tendency a lot lately that people let the players start their game let their combo start and then they shift them midway through where they're already committed into their right, play yeah. a little bit so we just pass it back nothing oh, happening I, I here on both what, sides that, that makes so much sense because you just can't play when you're deck locked down if you don't have a hard draw pearly monster and you have the shifter you can chill deck lockdown is not going to be there forever yeah and i mean it's it's more so of a feature badge lockdown right what now that we're having because he's passing it right back over to filippo play the cards duelist please notice though deck lockdown is not going to be there for forever but another pass from filippo what is Wait, going is he on seven here cards in hand? and there is the discard yeah i think filippo must be on seven cards right for sure he drew to six and he now drew to seven but um we gotta see that. Because that would be crucial, because then your shifter is not alive anymore. Activating the bonfire. Oh, look, we, we also deck locked out ourselves, because we did draw a bonfire along the way. Can I say that this is the first time that I see a deck locked down destroyed by itself? <laughs> 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 this is actually huge, and I, I want to see how this one resolves, because when you say end phase or end turn with seven cards in the hand, you are required to discard a card, right? You can't just now go back and say, I want to activate Dimension Shifter. Uh, this discard is going to ruin the shifter's effect. Oh, that's crazy. You're so right about that. Oh, is that the discard? No, I, I think that's a discard. It. I feel like that is the discard, because oh, Filippo does not look happy. Yeah, body language. Filippo does not look happy about that. And Wild does. <laughs> Wild is having the absolute blast here. That is, a, that is a shifter discarded in the most unmeaningful way ever as yeah. the only card in the graveyard, to be honest. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, so Bonfire grabbing the Snake Eye Ash. <sighs> I think it was a risky game by Filippo in general, though, because I feel like Wael has Crossout Designator in his hand. And we talked about it at the beginning of the match. He actually is citing a copy of Dimension Shifter to counter that. Oh, there is the infinite impermanence now, at least. Is that enough? Is that enough? Because usually there is loads and loads of extenders. After a while, did not get to play on his first turn. Does he have impermanence in his deck to, for a crossout designator? Is there something that he can do? Because he does not look happy. He says, okay. It's all right. It's okay. Can he get to another monster and perhaps go for a dark play? Is there... Oh, yeah, true. Oh, that shifter could be trouble in so many ways. But how are we getting another dark monster? That would need to be Witch. But Witch gets us started I here mean, anyways. You can go to Anima. You just need a monster. Yeah, this true, is, and true. Then it's for Lorcus True, true. Yeah, you're right. Back to that. <laughs> okay, well, only with Snake Ash on the field at the moment. But is there another... Oh, oh. Oh, it's original oh, Sinful wow. Spawns. We didn't even need the Snake Eye Ash to resolve. We had the original anyways. Is that enough? I feel like it is a lot, at least. Is it? <laughs> it is. I mean, he can summon Poplar, get the Field Spell, Poplar make it Anima, and then go to Dark yeah. Princess. Yeah, you're right. It definitely is a lot, yeah. I agree. We've seen so much Fire King, I completely forgot about the, the Temple as an extender. There is Snake Eye's Poplar. I mean, in the Fire King version, you also usually don't see Snake Idea Belster, but here, of course, in this version of the deck, you do see it. Yeah. And uh, Snake Idea Belster is such a crazy extender. It is. Like, the introduction of that card made the Snake Idea deck so much better. And I mean, 
now people are kind of forgetting about it, are sleeping on it because Fire King is a little more popular than the pure version of the deck. Or, uh, but look at that. You're getting the Snake Idea Bolster, a monster for free, and you even get to set up the Snake Eye Ash into the Spell and Trap Zone as well. For some duelists, Snake Eye Idea Bolster is just a sleepy memory, but not for a while. He's going to put it into the Spell and Trap Zone, summon it out, and now we have two monsters. Does he, does he realize that there is a shifter in the graveyard? I think we just went into the battle phase here, first of all. So we are on the safe side regarding the life points advantage. Uh, I mean, uh, honestly, IP Masquerina here does a lot. Yeah, Next absolutely. Turn on the first summon, you go into uh, Temple Effect, summon out the Snake Eye Ash, and then you have a. Oh, well, what am I Speaking talking about? Hulk, There's two monsters. <laughs> yeah, I guess that works. I guess that will do. <laughs> Moon of the Chloe's Tavern, it defeats Mev Requiem. And the main phase two is where we get to Stand pop up. off with our Fiendsmith cards. So Nightmare Phoenix into Mermaid. <laughs> <laughs> there is Fiendsmith Lacrima. And now the damage that has been done is really going to be impactful. And we have to keep note that there is only six minutes on the clock. Yeah. That's true. I just said Fiends with Lacrima, casually. That card is not allowed anymore. This is, of course, Lacrima for Crimson Tears. <laughs> I kept calling this card. Feeds with Lacrima the entire yeah, time. I mean, it's, it's part of the Feedsmith uh, package, I mean, right? It's, it's Therefore, always considered as a Feedsmith card, so I think it's only fair if we yeah. do the same. It's weird that they both have the same name, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> but let's see, we are going into Feedsmith sequence. Now, using the fusion summoning effect and bring back out Desiree. Imagine having Shifter active here. Yeah, we can only imagine. Yeah. I mean, I think there is Crossout Designator, so Crossout Designator would have always been a way to answer that, because I did not see the Shifter itself in the hand of Whale, and he saw a Shifter in game one, and so... Again, deck oh down. my, oh, not good again! Grief. Another deck lockdown! After we were able to use our deck now for the entire time, we are locking up our opponent again. And it's Desiree protected. If I've spied on the deck list correctly, there's only Harpy's Feather Duster as an answer, and you can just Desiree that. That, that, that is huge. Oh, Pearly is no, summoned. Summoned Pearly. Summon. Okay, there's a plan. That's good. We can summon out the Snake Eye Ash now, theoretically. However, there is Deck Lockdown. Yeah, it doesn't feel like we're going to do that, yeah. And Deck Lockdown is also going to stop the Pearly from happening. Of course. You can I mean, you can probably can, so you can out the Deck Lockdown on your turn. And we don't use the Ash effect, of course. Yeah. The thing is, Filippo can now activate a party spend from a hand to not activate the summoning from deck part of the effect. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, he can activate Pearly and then try oh. to chain it, but oh yeah, okay. We're just Otherwise. trying to use the Exceed part now, yeah. and that is going to be met yeah, by the Infinite Permanence. Would have helped. Which does make sense, of course. Yeah, we're playing around true. Triple Tech Talons by not activating the Fiends with Desiree, and we're also like... We have seen that Filippo was summoning and searching from the deck a whole lot, therefore this is not going to be easy. Is there maybe a Typhon in there? Typhon could be good I, here, right? I think Filippo actually picked up a Nibiru as the next card on the top of his deck. That would have been so useful in the last turn. Hold on, there is the Superstar Slayer Typhon Sky Crisis oh, wow. in his extra deck, though, and there it is on the field now as well! And that is a pretty good thing because it has 2,900 attack points, which is pretty massive into that. But you can bounce the... Sequence, okay, yeah. Okay, Makes we're sense. trying to get that sequence. I don't off. think that you can bounce a sequence. Is it only monsters? Honest. Yes. I think it's only monsters as well, yeah, you're right. But I think that they're probably talking about the, the targeting effect that and that sequence gives attack, right? Nope. He tried to activate it very clearly, but he wasn't able to, and that material was just gone back under the yep. Typhon, so Typhon can't. Do that, and the thing is now, you is it able to attack? Desiree. Yeah, is it able to attack over the Desiree then? I don't think it is, right? How how many how much defense does Desiree? I don't have? think that Desiree has Typhon targets. Four hundred. Yeah, Typhon doesn't target. The thing is, if you attack over Desiree, it's just gonna send the Typhon. True. Oh wait, but but, but Mike is onto something here. But like, Typhon doesn't target. That's a thing. Oh, we could wow. have just gone after the Desiree oh, anyways. No. We were not able to target the sequence, but that threw Filippo off. He would have just easily been able to use the effect of Typhon as it is not targeting to just get that Desiree off the field. The thing is, Deck Lockdown is selective, so while it has issues with playing through the still... I mean, oh wait, actually Desiree, he has to get over the Typhon somehow because now he has enough damage on the field. Yeah, look at the zone that Typhon mm. is. Oh no. 
You are so right. There oh, is Relinquished Anima. Why are you in that place, the Typhon? Punish. You're not going to be there for very long. Typhon effect going over to YL is the Typhon. Battle phase it is. Game it is as well. And YL is going to take this feature match down here in round number 10, being our winner with the Snake Eye, Diabalstar. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was trying to get all the engines going. There's so much more because Azamina, Fiendsmith, all those kind of cards. A, a lot went wrong there for Filippo. He made smart choices but then forgot about one thing that hasn't happened in 20 years of Yu-Gi-Oh! history. <laughs> that a duelist has seven cards in hand at the end of their turn because usually, you, you know, you play your cards but it, it, it just hasn't happened. And then the shifter had to be discarded. The shifter would have been so incredibly impactful. Then drew a Nibiru after that, the turn where his opponent has summoned so many monsters, and then the whole Typhoon shenanigans. It's honestly, it's funny, right? Because nowadays Yu-Gi-Oh! is so complex. We see yeah. so many crazy combos, long-winded combos, partially going for 10 minutes or something. Then. Some of those matches, in some moments, it just comes down to the basics of Yu-Gi-Oh, right? Yeah, I have seven cards in hand. Hand size limit is six. So at the end of the turn, you have to discard a card. That's how the rules of Yu-Gi-Oh have been since the beginning. You had to do that since the first moment of Yu-Gi-Oh, since 25 years ago, basically. And uh, they have just disregarded that in that moment, and that cost them the game. I mean, it's very odd to see a shifter alone in the graveyard <laughs> yeah. and not be activated. <laughs> yeah, totally, totally. And uh, that cost them the... I mean... Maybe he would have still not been able to win the game necessarily, but he definitely had a better chance of winning yeah. it, that's for sure. I mean, there was a second deck lockdown. Yeah, true, important. true. Even if the deck lockdown would have been gone, there would have been, yeah. Yeah, you're right, probably. Is there a way he could have gone through two extra deck summons under Shifter so that the Typhoon would have also been live? I mean, he could have just also gone for a possible Zeus line if he had the normal summon Pearly at some point. True, and I mean, the Pearly was there. Yeah, yeah, you're right. The Pearly was there, and there was also a way to activate its effect, so... Yeah. Well, how did the permanence, though? Yeah, <laughs> next oh, turn. Yeah, there, there's <laughs> a lot turn. of things, uh, but in the end, it was well, of course, winning the entire thing. And yeah, uh, yeah Snake Eye, of course, we've seen it yesterday. We've seen it a couple of months. Like we've seen it all over the place. Of course, it is still one of the most Decent dominating job. decks, and uh, is going to win this weekend. Did your mind change for today? Is no, it still water? I, I'm still with water. It's still <laughs> mermaid for you, Leo. Are you a Snake Eye believer once more? I have, uh, I have a gut feeling that Snake Eye is going to uh, give take me water. it. But, uh, honestly, this uh, I'm Team Ten Pie now. Team Ten. <laughs> oh, okay, my friend. I don't know when we lost you now. overnight, but uh, it's Team Ten Pie all <laughs> I, of a sudden. I stepped really badly, <laughs> <laughs> so it was. Uh, it's, it's Team Ten Pie. No, no I mean you're, you're joining <laughs> Alberto on that team, I think, right? Because yeah. Alberto actually has that as his pick for the event. Now uh, it's mine. Yeah, I mean you probably were a little bit influenced by roughly 100 players playing it at the first yeah. 50 player tables or something like that. Yeah, we, we even saw a Baptiste play 10 pack. Oh, Baptiste and de Rouen, That yeah. convinced me. Yeah, for sure. If he plays that, that is definitely a solid pick. I mean, yeah. overall, the deck is very, very solid. We it can't is. disregard that. Uh, we haven't seen a whole lot of Tempa here on feature, right? I remember one. But did we have any other? Uh, no, I don't think so. But I uh, think it's only one, yes. Yeah, it was only one so far. Even if we had multiple, it would have been probably just 20 minutes of gameplay because the deck just finishes games so quickly yeah. or loses games very quickly. In a heartbeat, honestly. Yeah. In a heart Actually, Tielemann's Heartbeat was the reason why the 10 player player didn't win on stream because they had Tielemann's Heartbeat for the rivalry of the Warlords. That was, 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 was that planned? Uh, not really, no, I gotta admit. <laughs> would have been crazy. <laughs> it would have been crazy, yeah, for sure. Uh, so, uh, what do you think? After what we've seen so far in this tournament, what is going to be like the most influential tech card that we've seen so oh. far? In this last game, we've seen Deck Lockdown, and that uh, completely crushed Mimigul Pearly. I mean, that's what it was designed for, obviously. That's why players are picking it up. What is the card of the event? I will step in. It's not Cosmic Cycle. Cosmic Cycle has been a tech card now for months, Leo. It's not for this event, okay? <laughs> it's still a crazy card. But yeah, go ahead. What's go your with pick? Nibiru. To, uh, Nibiru? To, yes, because most uh, of the people are playing Game Pulse, so yeah. the community has decided. Not to play maybe around Nibiru since Hippal is on the meta. Yeah. However, I think Nibiru is a very good meta call to catch people off guard. I like it, yeah. That's a good call. Agreed, agreed, for sure. Um, what else could there be? I think, for me personally, it's just Triple Tactic Thrust now very much being used as a going first card, setting all those trap cards very, very often. Uh, what about you, Leo? Do you have anything specific? 
Cosmic Cyclone. I'm j just going with the <laughs> gold of the quick spell cards. But we have heard that Tom is ready. So we're going over to the analyst corner. Hello, everyone. I'm here to go over some quick analysis and clips from the game. So uh, we saw Whale playing with his Snake Eye Kashtira Fiendsmith deck against Filippo with his Mimigul Pearly deck. And what a game it was. Uh, close fought. 2-1 victory for Whale. I think maybe let's have a little look at the first clip and I'll, I'll chat about it as we go along. So this is a whale playing and he ended up with this very impressive looking field. As you can see, he's kind of displaying all of the different engines that his deck has to offer. On the one hand, he's got the Kash Tira monster, he's got some Snake Eye cards and he's got the Fiendsmith cards. So a little bit of everything. And at the end of the day, it was too much for Filippo to break through, even with his very impressive uh, combination of Pearly and Mimigul. A very interesting and unique choice, I guess a lot of players probably wouldn't be expecting to see this. Interesting to talk about Wales Enfield here. He's got that Sunlight Wolf. I think a lot of players have chosen to include some more sort of interruption, uh, depending on the type of Snake Eye they're playing. So some players choosing not to use, for example, the Kash Tira cards or not to use the Fiendsmith cards. But because Wales going for both of them, I guess he doesn't feel the need to run an extra interruption in the form of Illusion Rabbit or Pit Knight early. He thinks the, the Fiendsmith cards by themselves are enough uh, to put up a strong end field. Now here we see Wales' first, you know, interaction that he realizes he's playing against at least the Mimigor cards here. And a very heads up play from him, uh, noticing that uh, Filippo is trying to give him a monster, but he's only got one monster zone free. So once he's had a quick read of the uh, effect of that Mimical Dragon, he says, no, I don't want that. You can keep it in your hand. I'm going to use this uh, IP Mascarena here. So again, very heads up from Whale there, an interesting thing to do. Mimigal opens up a lot of interesting interactions uh, that players probably aren't so used to in that giving your opponent a monster and the kinds of things it can do. So one unfortunate interaction for the Mimigal deck, for example, is the, uh, is the existence of Dominus Impulse. Uh, um, because if you activate Dominus Impulse, then you can't activate Earth Monsters. So if your opponent gives you a uh, Mimigal monster, then you would be unable to activate the negative effects that your opponent's trying to force you to activate. In this case, because Whale is running the Fiendsmith and the Kash Tira, which would conflict with the Dominus Impulse, he's obviously not running it in his deck, unfortunately for him. And here he gets a chance to peek at the extra deck, and the commentary team were wondering at that point in time whether it was worth it to concede to preserve the information of what you're playing. One of the very powerful effects of Kash Tira Unicorn is that he gets to look through your opponent's extra deck, they're probably not going to have many secrets uh, after that. In our next clip, we just see the end, so uh, Filippo's tried to play through that uh, field of whale, but it was unable to. There was a little discussion there as to whether that was the impermanence column or not that was activated later in the turn, and indeed it was not. But at the end of the day, it didn't really matter. We saw that SP doing quite a lot of work, getting rid of one pearly monster and then banishing another, uh, or banishing, in this case, the anima that was just summoned there. So too much from whale for game one. and uh, But then game two, the script was flipped, and uh, Filippo got a chance to show off his absolutely full combo here. So we see it in all its glory, uh, all of the pearly cards, all of the Mimigor cards. Well, presumably not so sure what was going on, why, <laughs> how these cards work together and what he was going to face on his next turn. A very classic sort of interruption against the Kash Tira deck. Uh, of old is to give them monsters and make sure they have them in face down defense positions so they're hard to flip up. So again, very powerful against where well, we saw on the next turn, Filippo using that Mimigal room to set the Kash Tira Unicorn, which is again, that sort of classic interruption against Kash Tira. Those remembering back in the day, probably Book of Moon was one of the very popular cards in the Kash Tira format. And uh, Filippo there just kind of explaining all of the different effects and interactions uh, that are face up on his field to Whale. So we've got that Mimigal room preventing, uh, sorry, that's the dungeon, the field spell, preventing uh, anything from being normal summoned while you control a set monster. Plus, special summon monsters can't be attacked. So again, quite a lot of interruptions there. We've got the Mimigal master, which can flip up the face down monster on either player's turn, or oh, sorry, on... Wales turn and at the end of the day that field proved too much and I didn't even mention the uh, five material pearly noir which a lot of decks can't answer even by itself so that was game two there wasn't too much what Wales could do there he tried to push through he tried to use the uh, black witch to send the mimical monster but another one was summoned again re-establishing that lock and preventing him from normal summoning so on to game number three we saw a very unorthodox start to the game uh, that 
deck lockdown was on the field for a couple of turns and very unfortunately for Filippo, a, a very unique situation maybe players don't even know nowadays because it just never happens. But if you end your turn with more than six cards in your hand, you actually have to discard one. You can only hold six cards in your hand. So that shifter you saw in the graveyard there was not discarded for its effect. Unfortunately, it was discarded just for hand size. So maybe Filippo being a little bit nervous on the feature match realized that, uh, well, forgot that he'd drawn up to seven cards because he just uh, passed for two turns under the deck lockdown. In our next clip here, we see uh, being released from the deck lockdown, Whale had made a couple of plays and attacked with uh, both of his Snake Eye monsters here. So I wanted to ask him, but I think his um, d decided uh, not to do the interview. But I was interested here to see why he chose to go into the uh, attack with both of his monsters before continuing on his combos there to possibly do more damage. It's obviously the safe route to do a little bit of extra damage when uh, time is low on the clock, but in this case, yeah, he maybe could have done a little bit more than he chose to do in that game. Uh, but at the end, it turned out to be enough. So if we just look at the last little clip, uh, Whale having, unfortunately, you know, past two turns, this deck lockdown here, it's actually a fresh deck lockdown, so he had to deal with the deck lockdown for two turns, and then... Uh, <laughs> A whale had got rid of it and then played himself and then played another deck lockdown, which feels very mean, just turning it off for a turn and then summoning again. We saw this Typhon there, and something I learned myself this weekend is Typhon actually doesn't target, so he could. He tried to target the uh, sequence in the Spell and Trap card zone, which you can't do because it has to return a monster, but it doesn't actually target the monster, so I think he was mistakenly under the impression that he couldn't bounce the Desiree with the Typhon, but in fact he could have just bounced it straight away, even though he tried to bounce the sequence, which was not allowed. And unfortunately for him, we saw uh, the anima to seal the deal there. So again, nerves can happen, but uh, always important to keep your monsters, if you can, in one of the three zones that cannot be uh, influenced by a relinquished anima and a well-deserved victory for Whale, uh, giving him that all-important win in the first round of the day, taking out a potentially slippery opponent in the in the form of a deck that he had absolutely uh, no idea he was going to come up against so that's all from me and let's round it uh, chuck it over to ed to round it off